First of all, uh, my name is Barbara Murphy. Um, this is my third time here, so I'm delighted to be back again. And um, I'm just going to take you through some of the customer examples, because obviously that's been something that's been asked today. Great, wonderful file system, amazing performance. What the hell do you do with this darn thing? So let's talk a little bit about the three verticals that we're focused on. Firstly, I want to remind you, um, we've taken a decision as a company that we're focusing our file system on big problems. The reason we're focusing on big problems is because it's easy to go in a market where you have a 10x advantage. And as we <coughs> get into these environments, and all, most of our environments are frankly enterprise environments, we have very few what I would call consider classic HPC environments that you have like a national lab or something like that. Um, when, we, when you can solve a big problem and you can demonstrate a product that's as easy to use as this, it becomes a lot easier to scale the business from there. So the three verticals that we have focused on for the last year and we continue to double down on for this year are life sciences, uh, deep learning, and fine tech. Um, in the life sciences space, uh, you're start, start, starting to see the emergence of microscopy, which has a huge uh, demands in terms of both the performance required to be, able to, do, uh, to be able to do the learning process. In fact, it really is a machine learning environment if you think about it. Um, and then drug discovery as a whole, uh, where again, we're seeing a huge increase in the amount of machine learning um, and AI that's being used in these verticals. So what's interesting about all three, while they have their distinct uh, use cases that uh, are separate and are CPU based, all three of them um, also have a very significant um, GPU-based um, workload coming into it. So Weka is really focused primarily on leading um, in the machine learning space, and these are the verticals that we've, uh, we've taken a, a tack at. So I'm going to take you through a customer uh, case study in life sciences specifically to start with. Um, customers Genomics England. Uh, Genomics England is part of the National Health Service in the UK. They were tasked uh, five years ago with the 100,000 Genome Project uh, to focus primarily on rare diseases and cancer um, and uh, genetic diseases. They chose a high performance NAS system with full scale out. So the challenge that they had when they were given their next project, which was the 5 million genome project, they really needed a system that could take advantage of object storage because that's the only thing that could get them the scale that they needed. And you'll see in a minute when I show you the, the growth rate they're expecting over the next five years, it becomes very clear that an object like uh, infrastructure was the only thing that had both the cost dynamic and the, and the capacity that they needed. The unfortunate part about them is they're also starting to bring in new use cases into their work environment. Um, they have a high performance compute cluster with uh, 40 Etico genomes. The way they had cobbled their system together in the short run to get the performance was all of the Eticos were running off of an all flash array. So basically local storage copy into the Etico genome systems, extremely inefficient, and you end up with multiple copies of your data. They needed all three vertices that we showed you earlier, um, and the only solution that could do it was Weka. The key thing that you have to understand about uh, the genomic space and why this is important is because it really uh, brings you down to what every enterprise experiences. Through the life cycle of this uh, workflow, you end up with you know, very, very different I.O. profiles. You start off with you know, your data generator. It could be a luminous sequencer. It could be a microscopy machine. You're coming off SMB, and it's extremely write intensive. Can I ask yes. one more thing about uh, Genome England? How did they implement uh, Weka? So did they? I, I will show you a lovely slide in a second that'll answer that question. So okay. thank you for, for uh, preempting. Thank you. Um, so I want to just quickly go through this, but the bottom line is the, the I.O. profiles as you move through the processing, the analytics, and the long-term data storage all start to look very different. It's not unusual to have millions of files. Um, it's not in, in a single directory because these data scientists open a directory, put all of their data into one, uh, one directory, and that's, they consider that they're done. So they need that directory to have massive expansion. The files can vary from tiny kilobytes to, to, to literally tens of gigabytes. 
Um, and the axis patterns vary across the different tools that they use on this sequence. And then when you get to microscopy um, and you start looking at digital pathology, you have a scale that happens from the data perspective. A single focal plane of a sample um, that you do in, your, um, in microscopy can end up creating one 15 gig file creates 3.75 terabytes by the time you finish breaking that and exploding that out into multi multifocal plane. So the, the data growth that they're going to have is, is beyond anything that you can experience in a normal environment. The normal data centers are growing at uh, about, uh, you know, they say about 2x a year. These guys are doubling their data every seven months. Are they not burning the hay to find the needle at any point? Are they burning the hay? Well, yeah, are they not going to do something with that and then get rid of so, very interesting. So we actually have one of our customers who actually presented at our sales training and told us they throw away 90% of their data. They throw it away because they can't store it. They actually don't want to throw anything away because they don't know if that has use in the future. And if you think of the oil and gas space, this was something the oil and gas space figured out a long time ago and why they went to parallel file systems and massive scale. Because it's so expensive to explore that once you get the data, you don't throw it away. And today we're actually seeing, in fact, we've just had our first win in the oil and gas space where they're now bringing all that old data back in and using machine learning to see if they can improve their oil and gas exploration. Got a name for but I, I don't have the name right now, but I hope I will soon. This is Genomics England's growth data path. This is where they are today. 2019, there were 25 petabytes. This is their expectation by 2023, 140 petabytes. They needed an architecture that can deliver a scale to 140 petabytes in a single namespace by 2023. It had to provide sufficient performance for their bio pipeline, which by the way, they will be adding GPUs to this list. So I mentioned Edico, which is an FPGA based solution. They will be adding GPUs. Um, they needed to provide a DR strategy because they are being paid by the UK government to store what is effectively a national archive of the UK genome project. You can't not have that in a few years time because the system goes down. So they had to have a DR strategy, but how the hell do you back up 140 petabytes of data, it's insane. And then last but not least, they had to manage within a very tight budget constraints that obviously everybody has. So they chose Weka. Um, you know, obviously they chose this because of our performance. They actually did the, all of the performance measurements they did for Weka were done in AWS. And inside of AWS, without their on-prem solution, they already saw a 4X improvement in their genome pipeline doing a test, uh, which is like one of the BCL to FASTQ tests. So just within what they could run in AWS, they already had a, a view that the performance would work. But the other things that was just the scalability, we allowed them to be able to use Object Store and being able to um, grow the namespace uh, to, the, to the levels they needed. So you asked what it looks like. They have three sites. In fact, this was a really beautiful design, and I think it really takes um, earlier, Enrico, when you talked about um, how we bring in object store. This is a beautiful way of bringing object storage and the massive scalability that object storage gives you into an environment along with our file system and providing a single namespace. So they have a main site in their main data center. This is where all of their researchers, and by the way, they have about 3,000 researchers in the UK, are going. Uh, the on-prem, they have their high-performance GPU cluster. They also have accessibility. Thank you. Maybe a, this is a stupid question, but actually, so uh, why, why not collapsing uh, the compute with the, with, the, with the storage? I mean, you are ju ju not just, but you are a file system, okay? So, and the overhead is not that high. Why not putting everything together and save a lot of, you know, space, uh, Great power, question. everything else? If you were a Greenfield site, and we have had Greenfield customers do that, it works really well. We're going into a data center that's been around for a while. You have different machines. Some have SSDs, some don't. In this environment, that's not possible. And also, um, you know, the fact that they had, they're bringing in new HPC clusters, but we also had to support the legacy stuff. We have our local 1.3 petabytes of flash on just standard white box servers. Um, 
feeding into an on-premises object store. We're then leveraging the capability of the object store, which has geo distribution. And we have a second and third site, one in Farnborough, one in Slough. The object store itself is doing the geo replication. So it, with our snap to object feature, you can snapshot down here and you can save a snapshot of the entire file system, all the data structures, everything um, preserved in the other two object stores. In the event that there is a massive flood, fire, whatever, in their main data center, we also have implemented in this solution a small cluster in the uh, Slough data center. And that's a nice thing about the feature which we didn't mention earlier. This is a very large cluster of storage from Weka. I think there's 24 nodes if I remember correctly. This is a minimum eight node cluster. We can rehydrate the entire file system on a much smaller system. So in the event that there is a major disaster in the future, they will maintain full accessibility to the data set um, within minutes. It literally just takes a rehydration of that file system. And obviously, they have a high-speed network in between. So you can see backing up this data is impossible, but through the clever use of the object storage tier and their capabilities, you've actually got a DR system and a fully preserved uh, system for the object store. And this is probably the, the most interesting slide of all. This shows you how, they, uh, how their cost dynamics changed. They went from a cost in 2018 on their legacy NAS, which was a you know, dedicated appliance-based system of 52 pounds per genome. Today at uh, 2020, they're at 13 pounds per genome already. And their expectation by 2023, it'll be down at two pounds per genome. So they've already had a 75% reduction and they're probably looking at closer to a 90% reduction in cost per genome but that's by the time. through the power of VECA? That's through the and power. And object storage. Correct. And that's what's great about it. We're, we're, because we're software, you can configure your hardware infrastructure to suit your environment. <coughs> England can fit all of its working data set for its 3,000 plus researchers on a petabyte of flash today. Mm -hmm. Their object store, when we installed this a year ago, we installed 25 petabytes of object store. Well, guess what? Their rate of ingest of data ended up being quite significantly higher. Mm -hmm. So in less than a year, they'd already expanded the object storage tier to 40 petabytes. Mm -hmm. They didn't need to add any more flash because they have enough performance, but they're able to expand that object store tier out. And obviously, um, as they bring on more uh, new workloads, they'll expand their flash independently so they can expand performance or expand capacity and do that very efficiently in, uh, through the software base. Um, and by the way, their pipelines cannot run off of S3. So in object storage alone, assuming you could get the performance. No, but that's not, that, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, um, you mentioned a couple of times that, um, that you, you created a new uh, quadrant. Um, and that's OK, but the quadrant still includes other storage as well. It's not only Weka. It's not the Weka quadrant. It's a Weka quadrant because you are utilizing the other storage underneath it as well. Right. So. Uh well, the one kind of storage that still makes sense outside of Weka is an object storage. Mm -hmm. And the reason uh, we like object storage is, A, it's an open standard. There are many implementation. And it allows customers to have the freedom of configuring how much durability they want. You shouldn't trust any single vendor to give you durability. So we don't want to own 100% of the safety of your data, you shouldn't trust us. So you should buy the, the way to handle it from Weka, but you should say, hey, for the durability, I want another vendor. And, any, and it doesn't matter who you're buying storage from, you should buy from more than one vendor on more than one solution to make sure you have a high enough durability. And you can see where we're going. We're already letting you store it on two distinct systems in two different places, on-premises and the cloud. And this is not something, if, one store, if any storage vendor tells you that they're also taking care of your durability forever, 
-hmm. run away. And I, I would put a slightly difference. What we're, what, what our software is allowing you to do is take all of those three quadrants, the best of scalability with Object Store, the best of usability and shareability with NAS, mm -hmm. and the best of performance with SAN or Direct Attach, and allowing you to be able to leverage that in a single platform. And then you actually have the hardware independence to be able that's, to choose that's it. That's an awesome uh, yes. thing to have. But Barbara, very quickly, sorry. Um, within that sort of engagement, how long did it take you to get to the, the point where you could understand what they were trying to do and they could understand what your technology could do for them? Because this looks like it might have been a little bit of a complex engagement to get to get in there and work out how to combine those two technologies that Aaron's just been talking about. Great question. And make it work within yeah. their environment. So you have a customer who's coming off of service on their three-year contract. They you have a choice. They can either continue contract for another period of time on that. They, the Genomics England team actually had a consultancy agency called, uh, it's actually called Nephos Technologies in the UK, come in and do a full assessment, uh, right? Nephos. So okay. they had Nephos come in and do a full assessment. And Nephos actually managed a tender to all vendors, so uh, many different vendors. We took a decision to partner with one of the object storage vendors and go in as a total solution and offer a, um, a solution that says, don't just compete with Object Store, which some were doing. Don't try and compete with All Flash, which were also others were trying to do. Because by the way, the performance requirements on this, this deal uh, were 100 gigabytes per second. Um, the system we actually installed does 150 gigabytes per second. And in fact, you can see in uh, David's quote here, um, he ended up um, getting way beyond the performance they expected. It was a 10x increase that they saw. So it was complex, but through the RFP process that was managed, it actually made it a very uh, clean and smooth system. And then obviously the performance uh, was something that we were able to uh, check out with, with the cloud. But ultimately, uh, without the partnerships, I would say, um, with the other vendors, and that's a lot of what we also offer from a company perspective, is because we're independent, we work with the customer and say, who's your preferred vendor for Object Store, or who's your preferred vendor for your server platform? Is it Dell? Is it HP? Is it you know, Supermicro? We allow them to have that flexibility because we already have pretty much pre-configured solutions with all of those.